Good evening, everyone, and thanks so much for joining us for this Sunday's edition of Alaska Weather. I'm Dave Percy, a meteorologist with the National Weather Service, and I'll be hosting this evening's broadcast. Uh, up first, uh, satellite imagery. You know, uh, warnings, watches, or advisories out uh, for tonight of anything significant uh, for the, or tonight or tomorrow. Uh, looking at the satellite, uh, you can see system here pushing eastward. Uh, pretty uh, fairly strong low pressure area bringing storm force winds out here to the western Aleutians and uh, rain and snow showers. Gale force winds here in advance of the front pushing rain in across the central Aleutians today. And clouds on the increase there as the storm approaches the Perbolofs and Fox Islands. Otherwise, uh, looking pretty good. Bristol Bay, um, partly to mostly clear skies there, some sunshine. Into uh, Kodiak Island, they're seeing some clouds increasing here, backing in from the west, maybe a few scattered showers to go along with that. Some clouds south side of the Alaska Peninsula, otherwise looking pretty good here from northern Bristol Bay, right on up into the northeast interior. Uh, looks like a few clouds here over the uh, Alaska Range, right through this area here, but Tana Valley on up in the Yukon, a uh, really nice afternoon. Mostly just clouds here with little, if any, precipitation associated with it. And that's actually going to be pulling back to the west-northwest and moving out of the area later on tonight. And over the Gulf of Alaska, we've got a couple of systems, one right up along the coast here, uh, really uh, produced only kicking off a few showers over the uh, central panhandle there, light rain showers, more off the coast, and uh, mostly just clouds extending westward here along the north Gulf Coast. Again, that's starting to spread into, or did spread into Prince William Sound, and also into the southeast interior, another system farther down to the south here, gradually uh, trying to push up to the northeast. You can see the uh, cloud shield there, and then the counterclockwise circulation associated with the cloud mass there, but the whole uh, kind of pulling back to the west, but the entire system slowly drifting up to the northeast. And on the chart today, uh, weak trough roughly right through here, possibly another one right in there, but again, not a lot of significant weather associated with it beyond the clouds. Uh, this isolated rain snow showers to mostly just isolated to scattered rain showers here over the southern central panhandle in areas. And again, the uh, mostly sunny skies here with a band of clouds, and that's about it, uh, non-precipitating clouds from uh, roughly near or just south of Eagle, south into the Alaska range here, and uh, kind of a mostly, partly to mostly cloudy day, southern Cook Inlet, and of course a few showers isolated there for Kodiak Island, dry sunshine in areas here, Bristol Bay, Alaska Peninsula, and then the uh, system out here to the west, down to about roughly around 970 millibars there, tight enough gradient, produced storm force winds, got 65 miles an hour out over the western Aleutians, and uh, Gale force winds in advance of the front pushing into the central illusions along with uh, rain and then uh, starting to see the wind switch around and will increase here uh, this evening, especially for the Perbolofs Eastern Aleutians, eventually some moisture moving in. And for tonight, you can see by late tonight, this is roughly about 4 a.m. tomorrow morning, uh, definitely into the uh, snow or snow and rain, trending toward snow and rain or trending toward rain eventually here, but uh, uh, probably won't be completely rain until sometime tomorrow there for the Pribilofs. Definitely it'll change over to rain for the eastern Aleutians with uh, uh, breezy conditions. Wind's not too strong there, kind of losing the gradient as the front advances eastward there. Uh, probably see more wind in the Pribilofs than you will down there for the uh, Fox Islands. And then uh, just variably cloudy to a gradual increase in the mid and high level clouds here along the southwest coast. And uh, tight gradient, good westerly winds, storms out here to the west, give way to gales into the central Aleutians there with uh, numerous rain and snow showers, actually kind of trending back to a steadier rain and snow with those stronger winds out over the western Aleutians and some lower snowfall levels. Stays cl mostly clear and uh, winds fairly light here through much of the central northern interior. Uh, kind of an increase in the clouds here across southern Alaska, even may start picking up some uh, rain and snow showers, a little bit of moisture there, mainly on the east side of the Kenai Peninsula, just a chance up into western Prince William Sound uh, late tonight, and even maybe some flurries developing on the eastern slopes of the western Alaska range, but mostly the change will be an increase in the clouds, and northern panhandle, this area of moisture lifting northward, that uh, pushes into the area tonight, that will lift northward late tonight, 
and the southern areas will become more showery, so kind of a changing pattern there, and then some break off the coast, next uh, system down to the southwest, that tomorrow will make a jog up to the northeast and spread more rain in with this warm front into the area there, increasing southeast winds as well along the coast, and off the coast, gradually pushing inland uh, later on, but a chance of moisture all the way up late tomorrow afternoon, should reach all the way up to uh, the passes there, and uh, just scattered areas of rain and snow possible here along the North Gulf Coast. Uh, probably mostly rain in the afternoon. And uh, better chance there on the upslope areas of the Kenai Peninsula east side, uh, the Prince William Sound Zone as well. <clears throat> and look for kind of a little bit better chance of some light snow developing here. Definitely looking at lower flying conditions for the Alaska Range on those eastern approaches through the passes. Could go possibly IFR right now, just going for marginal conditions in this area, but uh, increasing chance of snow there again on the eastern slopes of the western Alaska Range. Dry uh, northern, or um, north of the Alaska Range, clouds will push up across the northern Sitna Valley, but should stay VFR in those areas, and definitely VFR north of the mountains, Tanah Valley, sunny skies tomorrow, all the way up to the Arctic coast, and uh, then you pick up the clouds over the Yukon Delta, some scattered areas of snow with the main band right along and off the coast. And then for Tuesday, that front uh, pushes up to, toward the coastline, but the band of precipitation becomes narrower. So we're looking at a chance of uh, rain or rain and snow mix there, a little milder temperatures, uh, especially in the afternoon, mostly uh, will be this type of precipitation. Wind's really not much of a factor at all, losing the gradient there. And that's why it's stalling out along the coast and weakening. So this will be an area of light precipitation extending down to the Alaska Peninsula there. Higher pressure builds into the central Aleutians. Uh, lighter winds, maybe some sunshine in the afternoon for Adak and Atkin. Between systems, the next one out there to the west-southwest starts to affect the far western Aleutians late in the day. Otherwise, uh, moisture snow pushing northward should stay south of St. Lawrence Island through the day. And uh, otherwise, the interior, again, mostly sunny, mostly clear, maybe a few clouds scattered around, but uh, nothing too uh, nothing too significant at all. And even the Arctic coast could be mostly clear, possibly, although there may be some areas of low clouds and fog, as there usually is up there in areas, but uh, generally looking definitely dry through all the interior Alaska. Exception being, maybe some moisture might work in out of Canada. Uh, that's just a very slight risk there in toward uh, the Northway area, for example and uh, I don't even think it'll reach the Wrangells. So uh, dry for Prince William Sound and the North Gulf Coast, east side, but uh, this trough here, east-southeast flow, probably bringing a chance of uh, rain to the east side of the Kenai Peninsula, maybe into southern Cook Inlet, Seldovia, down to Kodiak Island, and then eastward here into possibly Kachemak Bay. Pretty light though, and then another trough lifts northward here, bringing a chance of rain over the southern southeast coast, best chance of rain, probably likely, Prince of Wales Island, and that Metlakatla over towards Stewart. And moving on to the low temperatures for tonight, uh, still dropping a shade below zero up there in the Arctic coast, uh, zero to five below, and uh, even down into the Arctic Village area, otherwise south of the mountains, single numbers through here, warming into the mid to upper teens over the Tanana Valley with teens all the way out to the Seward Peninsula. St. Lawrence Island, mid-20s more or less, give or take there. And that'll extend down the southwest coast here with uh, teens near 20 over the inland areas. And then uh, east of the Kuskokwim Mountains, it looks like uh, temperatures ranging uh, from 20 at McGrath to maybe 30 down towards Sleep Mute and Sparavon. Actually, Sparavon, Sleep Mute's over that, that way. And looks like uh, temperatures mostly in the uh, lower to mid 30s here for south central Alaska. Some of you are staying above freezing actually. And upper 30s for Kodiak Island. Mostly in the 30s there out over the Aleutians. And mid to upper 30s for the Aleutians. Just a shade above freezing for the Pervilofs. And lows in the lower 40s for the Panhandle. A little cooler to the north. Highs tomorrow afternoon. Uh, 40s, upper to lower 50s there, and mid to upper 40s, south central Alaska, again approaching 50 degrees to Sitna Valley, and lower 40s for the Tanana Valley, and you see upper 20s right up the mid to upper 20s for the Brooks Range now, and mid teens, mostly in the teens, north slope Arctic coast, lower 30s here along the southwest coast, lower 40s for the Alaska Peninsula, and out west upper 30s, and for the highs for the afternoon, kind of a zoomed in shot here, 
We've got mid 30s here, South Central Alaska uh, for Tuesday morning. These are the low temperatures, so above freezing. 20s out to the west, falling to near zero up over the Yukon Flats, Arctic Coast, North Slope. Not much change uh, there for the Panhandle. And then for the highs in the afternoon, lower 50s now, a little more prevalent there for the Susitna, Manuska Valley areas, to near 50 even in the Copper River Basin, and mostly in the 30s, lower 40s, Tanana Valley. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. Moving on to aviation, uh, we've got quite an area of IFR here, stretching from just southwest of St. Lawrence Island on down to the Alaska Peninsula, and then lots of IFR here along and south, spreading up into Kodiak Island, Gulf of Alaska, on up into western Prince William Sound area there, and then marginal VFR into the Panhandle, IFR in northern Panhandle there, Lynn Canal Glacier Bay, up to the passes, and then off to the east, VFR, Arctic Slope North Coast, down into the uh, west central interior here, and it looks like marginal VFR, uh, Cook Inlet, Copper River Basin, into the 40 mile country, and that more or less holds into the afternoon with uh, IFR a little bit on the increase there. Uh, Western Prince William Sound, uh, maybe working inland a little bit. IFR, Kodiak Island, Alaska Peninsula, much of Bristol Bay all along the southwest coast, especially the Yukon Delta, now up across St. Lawrence Island into the Bering Strait. Uh, Central North Slope, Western Arctic Coast, marginal out over the Aleutian Southern Bering Sea. And for Tuesday afternoon, We've got uh, IFR now south of St. Lawrence Island, again, back to the southwest here across the Alaska Peninsula, up the east side of Kodiak Island, and then across the southern gulf into Prince of Wales Island here. But uh, notice it becomes VFR over the northern panhandle and central areas as well, and marginal with areas, spotty areas of uh, IFR, mostly along the Alaska Range here, uh, with uh, looks like Marginal VFR spreading up into the Yukon Flats, back into IFR there for the Seward Peninsula. And for passes tomorrow, VFR for both Anatovic and Adigan. And Lake Clark and Merrill, VFR becoming marginal VFR with uh, Rainy becoming marginal in the afternoon on the eastern approach. Otherwise, until then, VFR. And for windy VFR the entire day, another VFR day for both Isabel and Mentasta with uh, Tanita. Should be VFR tomorrow and uh, well, will be VFR tomorrow. There'll be more clouds, a little lower ceilings, but uh, staying in the VFR uh, threshold. And for Portage, uh, marginal VFR, increasing IFR throughout the day, especially on the eastern entrance here. And for the Chilkoot and White Pass, IFR from start to finish on Monday. And freezing levels, 2,000 feet uh, up into uh, across most of the Cuscoom Valley here, Western Alaska Range, South Central Alaska, 4,000 feet, just barely making it to Kodiak Island. Eastward there to around Sitka, Mount Edgecombe. And then uh, back to the Alaska Peninsula, colder air remains out here over the uh, Bering Sea and the Aleutians. And for icing, areas of uh, light to isolated, moderate icing here for the Aleutians. Uh, they're mostly south of the Pribilofs here, and then, but to the east, we have another area from St. Matthew Island near the southwest coast, uh, but definitely affecting uh, Macoriuk and Cape Newenham, Alaska Peninsula, a little more widespread there for Kodiak Island, and this area shifting northward and increasing along the uh, uh, western Alaska Range here, and also spreading up into the eastern Kenai Peninsula, western Prince William Sound. And then uh, we've got icing developing here over the southeast coast uh, tomorrow morning, but the uh, bulk of it's still off to the southwest here, but this will be on the increase throughout the afternoon. And for the jet stream, southerly flow here, that'll be pushing that moisture northward, but the main uh, storm will still be off to the southwest even through the afternoon. Otherwise, basically upper high pressure controlling much of interior Alaska, but southern Alaska now becoming under the influence of this uh, easterly flow associated with the upper low farther to the south, and another one back here over the Bering Sea, keeping the uh, uh, main jet suppressed to the south, but look for some southeasterlies across the northern bearing at about 60 knots. And for the uh, 9,000 foot winds, east southeast to north northwest here, the main flow, anywhere from uh, 15 to 25 knots across the interior areas, picking up to 30 to 45 knots here with the Gulf of Alaska across Kodiak, southwest coast, maybe up to 50 knots there just south of St. Lawrence Island. Strongest winds will be these westerlies here coming across on the south side of that uh, Bering Sea low, anywhere from 40 to as high as 70 knots 
again out of the west, and the strongest winds will be just off the coast of the Panhandle. There as high as 40 to 45, 3,000 feet, 25 to 30 down there, lighter over the inland area, especially toward the border. Southeast interior, pretty light on the winds there, Arctic coast 15 to 25, and uh, 35 knots right across Kodiak Island. Again, strongest winds here out over the uh, Aleutians, 30 to 60 knots or 40 to 60 knots, and with that will be quite an area of moderate chop there, but mostly west of Nikolsky out the Shimianat too, and Kodiak Island, Bristol Bay, northeast Bristol Bay looks pretty turbulent. It used to be that you could only warn one person about a tornado after it had already blown down someone else's barn. Now, on average, we're able to issue a tornado warning 15 minutes before the tornado's even there, and that wouldn't be happening without Doppler radar. This next rad system has reduced fatalities on the order of 45 percent due to tornadoes since its advent. We have a lot more information now about storms and being able to understand how they develop, how they produce severe weather, and how that information might be used to improve warnings for our National Weather Service partners. The lab is unique in that we serve the nation by supporting the National Weather Service and its mission to protect lives and safe property by improving the accuracy and the lead time of severe weather warnings. We have a legacy of radar research and converting existing technology from military to weather purposes. A recycled Doppler radar led to the development of NEXRAD, installed nationwide in the early 90s. It allowed forecasters to see storms like never before. Not only did we help bring that technology to the National Weather Service and to help protect lives and property, but we have continued to upgrade that technology, keep it relevant, and keep it state of the art. Recently, a major upgrade was added. Dual polarization technology takes the radar from 2D to 3D. Forecasters now know more about what type of precipitation is falling which is very helpful during winter storms, as well as how much rain is accumulating, resulting in better flash flood warnings. The radar can also detect and track tornadoes based on debris. Looking to the future, the National Severe Storms Lab is testing the capabilities of phased array radar. Originally used by the U.S. Navy, the antenna scans the skies electronically rather than mechanically, allowing the radar to focus on a storm. With current technology, we get a full picture or image of what is going on within a storm every four to five minutes. So it's more like a snapshot. Whereas with phased array radar, we get that picture of what's going on in the storm every minute. So it becomes more like watching a movie. So we can do adaptive, rapid scanning on the storms that matter most, being able to provide the information that's most relevant when and where it's happening. Another advantage of phased array radar is its multifunction capability, providing weather and air traffic information simultaneously. Number one, it is a system that promises to replace and expand upon the existing weather surveillance radars. Secondly, to replace aging air traffic surveillance radars. And number three, it offers a potential application to meet Department of Homeland Security and Defense requirements for identifying and tracking non-cooperative aircraft. With the replacement of all these various radars with a single system, the American taxpayer could realize substantial savings in cost. You have a lot fewer radars to maintain and the electronic capability of this also reduces maintenance costs because you do not have moving parts. Not too long ago, the ability to predict severe weather was thought to be impossible. During the past several decades, research conducted at the National Severe Storms Lab has developed life-saving tools like Doppler radar. We've progressed from no warning of threatening weather to about a 15-minute lead time, and current research promises to extend that much further. 
our knowledge of severe storms and how they behave, and our use and ability to use the Doppler radar technology and is, is in a lot of cases a direct result of that close working relationship, that research to operations component that we get between the National Severe Storms Laboratory and a forecast office. That history and understanding of how these data can be used by our users and doing the research to help advance the use of radar technology, really it's what we live for, it's in our lifeblood, it's in our history. It's now easier than ever to be a part of weather research. We just launched the mPing app for both iPhone and Android users, and it's totally free. Ping, which stands for Precipitation Identification Near the Ground, is a research project by the NOAA National Severe Storms Lab and the University of Oklahoma. With the mobile app, you can send us your weather observations on the go. Are snowflakes falling on your head? Is hail hitting your car? Just select what type of precipitation is falling and press submit. It's that easy. It takes about five seconds and it's anonymous. Reports can then be viewed online. Our scientists will compare your report with what the radar has detected. This helps us develop new radar technologies and techniques. Download the app today, share your reports, and let's work together to make our nation weather ready. Learn more here and follow us. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Today's sea ice analysis, again, not showing uh, much change, although now we've got a little bit more ice here. So the sea ice free waters that were north of St. Lawrence Island have now become uh, open water and then open here, extending down toward Nunavak Island. A little more ice on the north side of Nunavak Island, as well as it looks like in over uh, western Cuscoan Bay here and uh, really not much additional change coming up in the next day or so. Moving on to marine forecast. Gales showing up on the south coast of the Panhandle tomorrow afternoon with winds southeast 30 knots. Uh, same forecast as yesterday for Monday with seven to 10 foot sea, southeast increasing to 30 knots, Clarence Strait, and then 15 knots south to southeast winds, central northern inside waters. And then for uh, Tuesday, northerlies 35 knots. Gale force northerlies coming into the northern Lynn Canal area and north 25 for uh, Stevens Passage, Clarence Strait, though, still southeast 25. Small craft advisories there and also small craft advisories out along the coast with a good stiff 30 knot wind here on the south coast out of the east all the way up to the uh, central north coast, extreme north coast, northeast 30, 12 foot seas. Uh, Cook Inlet, northern Cook Inlet, northeast of 20, with seas at about 6 feet. North 25, seas about the same, south of the Forelands. And then northeast 25 with 8-foot seas with Kachemak Bay. Easterly 30 knots, just under Gale Force or the Barrens. Small craft advisories here for the North Gulf Coast. Northeast 15, Prince William Sound. Outlook for Tuesday, north 15 there for the Sound, with seas no more than 2 feet. And easterly, 30 knots, increasing the winds here for the eastern north Gulf Coast, and that develops into gales throughout the day for the uh, western coast here on down across the Barren Islands, and full gales there for Kachemak Bay, and minimum gales now in the forecast for Southern Cook Inlet and small craft advisories for Northern Cook Inlet. Kodiak Island, northeast winds 25 to 30 knots tomorrow, seas 10 feet, and from Sitka Nap to Castle Cape, east 30 knots with 8-foot seas, and southeast winds 20 to 25 across the Alaska Peninsula to east 25, Bristol Bay. And for Tuesday, northeast 30, a little bit of an increase there for Bristol Bay, and then a switch in the wind direction here, increasing winds northwest 30 to 40 knots there, maybe even higher gusts out of the bays on the uh, Pacific side of the peninsula. Sitkanak to Castle Cape, northeast 30 knots, gales, 35 knot gales there for Shelikoff Strait with 13 foot seas, 15 foot seas, 
and 30 knot winds from the northeast to the east side of the island. And for the uh, Aleutians tomorrow, keeping the storm warnings out west there, west 50 knots, 33 foot seas, west 45, just a shade under storm force here. For the west central Aleutians, still pretty high seas there, over 30 feet, and then west-southwest at 40 for the Adak and Atka, and then falling under gale force here across the Fox Islands, gradually diminishing a little lighter, 25 to 30 out of the southwest. Outlook for the Tuesday, or for Tuesday, westerlies at 30 knots there are eastern Aleutians, minimum gales now west 35 for the central Aleutians, and uh, less wind also out here over the western Aleutians down under gale force there for the area from uh, Kiska Island to Shimia. And for the southwest coast, southeast 25 tomorrow, sea 7 to 6 feet, south 30 for the Perbolofs. Looks like gales there for St. Matthew Island, 35 knot winds and 25 knots for St. Lawrence Island, only 15 though for Norton Sound. Those will pick up about 20 knots from the northeast on Tuesday, otherwise east 20 for uh, the St. Lawrence Island area. East 15, north side of Nunavak Island, small craft advisories on the south side there, also for the uh, St. Matthew Island zone, and west 15 with 15-foot seas for the Perbolofs. And for the eastern Beaufort Sea coast, we've got uh, east winds, brisk wind advisories, 25 knots, falling back to 20 on the central coast, down the west side, 15 to 20 east-northeast there from Cape Beaufort to the Bering Strait. And then for Tuesday, lighter winds, 10 to 15 knots here uh, in that zone, only 10 knots on the western coast, and a little lighter here for the central and east side, but uh, as you get over toward demarcation point, those kick back up to 30 knots, so first going to advisories next couple of days there. And then for tonight, uh, breezy up there, but not quite as much, but clear and dry through much of the interior, all the way down to the southwest part of the state. Uh, southeast flow here, picking the, uh, bringing a chance, a uh, slight chance of some shower activity, a little moisture here to uh, the east side of the Kenai Peninsula. And in this area, lifting north, developing and lifting north across the panhandle. So this will be changing back to showers with the next system rapidly pushing up for tomorrow. Front pushing eastward and weakening with less wind, but pretty tight low center, keeping the storm force winds out over the western Aleutians through tomorrow. Otherwise, uh, not much change. Central northern interior, wet for the panhandle. And then for Tuesday, rain mostly over the southern southeast coast. <laughs> These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbormaster before you go boating.